What's up everybody? So today we are back in the garage working on the truck once again. Last episode we got the floor pan put in, bonded, welded, all that good stuff. And today we finally get to see how that fiberglass stuff held up. Oh yeah. Because that'll be interesting. It will, it's been, yeah. It's been, it's been a little over 24 hours, but I am kind of curious how this held up. Like I said, um, this is something I learned while I was taking some classes. And uh, from you guys have been, have been saying like fiberglass would work just fine for up in that area. But I think the panel bond would be a little bit stronger. It is more expensive, but we had, I don't know how much left over from doing the floor pan. We probably had like a little less than half a tube. Yeah. So it worked for our needs. We were able to use up that tube so it didn't go to waste. But let's go ahead and uh, peel this off. Oh yeah, it just comes off nicely. Not bad. Uh uh. It did kind of stick a little bit right there. I think it's pulled it on its own too. That'll be nice. Look at that. Wow. That really sealed it. Make sure. Well, let me get out a light here. I huh. think you feel it really. Look at the corner. Yeah, it really filled in everything there. Nice and solid. So for now, I think what the plan is, we're gonna go ahead, scuff up this floorboard, clean it all up, get rid of all this uh, crap, and then we can go ahead, um, pour 15, seam seal, and once that's done inside the cab, we'll go ahead, undercoat the underside, seam seal that side, and what else did you wanna do? Uh, cavity wax. Cavity wax, I that's right. That. Cause we're gonna go on and get inside of these areas here just to uh, make sure that the, yeah. they're fully sealed, not getting any moisture anymore, water, anything in there, as well as the other side. We're gonna make this whole thing just match and uh, just have it nice. So like I said, let's go and jump into this and start scuffing. Okay, so you guys can see here, we got the floor all scuffed up. We use the red scotch right? We got both sides scuffed. So when we do go to paint this, both sides will be painted. Um, right now, we're gonna go ahead, take our self-etching primer, hit all the bare metal spots on this side. And then there is a couple spots up there on the uh, passenger side where it does look like rust is starting to come through. So we're gonna hit that with some pour 15, finish that off, and then uh, let this stuff all cure up. So we just got our self-etch sprayed. Everything is all cured up. It's been about 20 minutes now. Um, next step up we're gonna do is go ahead, seam seal everything. So anywhere, like up here at the top line, where the two pieces of metal connected, we'll need to get seam sealed all this down here. And then the, each one of the brackets and stuff, we'll all need to get seam sealed as well. Also, that we're, also we want to go ahead and do the, each spot weld, just because when you weld, there's a chance there could be a little bit pinhole. And I don't want any moisture or anything coming through, so I wanna have that all sealed off and the underside, which we'll probably do that on our own time just because you guys won't be able to see that. Um, it'll be too dark underneath there. You guys will be able to see this through the top half, but as far as the bottom goes, you're not gonna be able to see that. And then once that is completed, we should be able to go ahead and paint this, but we're gonna have to wait 24 hours because we did this over here, which has been pour 15. Um, those are just kind of the questionable spots we had where the uh, rust was, was kind of popping through. Um, yeah, just gotta let that cure up. But like I said, let's go ahead and get this seam sealed. So good news is we got it seam sealed. Bad news is we got a lot of seam sealer. So it doesn't look the prettiest. It is definitely seam sealed. We have more than enough. I cut the tip on that a little bit too big so it pushed out a lot of product. But there it is. It is completed. Just let this stuff set up and cure and then it is paintable. So once this stuff does set up, along with that pour 15 over there, we will be able to paint this floor pan. We've already gone through and scuffed it, which we may have to do a little bit more scuffing just to be safe. Yeah. But uh, it should be good. So next up, um, we're going to go ahead, like I said, let this cure up and then do the underside. So we still have to do uh, what seam sealer underneath. 
Seems undercoating undercoat. and maybe a little bit of port 15. We'll see once we get underneath there. But like I said, you guys probably won't be able to see that just because it's so dark and it's kind of, it's in a little bit of a confined area as, as you guys can see. So we will come back once we have that completed and we can show you guys, hopefully. Day two. Okay, so we are back in the garage now. We've been working this whole time. Um, last thing you guys saw us do is we ended up getting this interior all seam sealed, self-etched, and as you can see, it is all cured up. And uh, oh yeah, I guess we did the port 15, which you guys can already see. We did some seam sealer over top of that, so that is ready to go. Um, and we are ready to go and paint this. Now, in the time that we weren't filming or doing anything or showing you guys anything, we've been underneath the truck. We seam sealed all the seams underneath there. We self etched, and we, I guess, Luke undercoated. Yeah, short straw. Yeah, that that was, was a, awful. That was an awful job. So I'm glad I didn't have to go underneath there. I mean, even well, the seam sealer. Covered. Yeah, you're a mess, dude. But the seam <laughs> sealer was also quite awful too. I mean, both. I'm surprised of them, you didn't get caked with it. I, I came close. I came really close. We don't really have like the best setup here. The truck is just kind of tilted it up on the side yeah. and basically crawling out there and shoot and go. So it it works. It'd be nicer to have like a bigger shop space and it'd really be handy if we had a freaking lift a or lift something. Would, would have been but, great. Yeah. So <laughs> we're making do with what we have. Um, we can go ahead and kind of show you guys underneath here. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it is all undercoated, seam sealed. Yeah, I have it's pretty. I have no idea what you guys can see all underneath there. But yeah, so for now, we're gonna go ahead and uh, finish off this floor pan. We've gone through and done a ton of stuff like you guys have been watching in the past two videos. And uh, we've got everything masked off, ready to go. So our next step up, we'll be go ahead and paint the floor pan, get it completely done. Um, I think the color we're going with is just black, just straight plain old black. Yep. So I see them paint. Those. It'll all be underneath the carpet, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the only thing we're going to see is the back wall, which we'll probably be doing something with this here in the future. But for now, let's get this floor pan done and painted. So we just managed to get the floor pan done. It has been sprayed with three coats now, and it is looking so good. I am so happy with, with the way this turned out. Look at that. It's real crispy. It's so shiny. I don't know if it's gonna stay this shiny or not. It's weird, yeah. But uh, it'll probably be more of a satin finish is what I'm thinking. I mean, it, we've, it's, it's had plenty of time to flash off mm -hmm. now, so I'm kind of thinking it might just stay this shiny. I know you're not gonna see it. It's obviously gonna get covered up by carpet, Yeah. but just for you guys to see, it's it's done. And to know it's done. It's Finally looking good. Done. It's got a ton of work into it. It's seam sealed. It's undercoated. It's pour 15. It's all that good stuff. So it should not have any rust, any issues, or anything here in the future as far as moistures and stuff go. So we should be good with the floor pan. So hopefully here in the next video we can go ahead and install the rest of the interior. Um, obviously we need to do something here with the back wall, which we kind of mentioned when we started spraying because we got mm -hmm. overspray on here. So. This back wall will be changing just because everything else in this cab will be black. Obviously, we got the dash, all the interior pieces, the seats, which I think... I think I, I'm playing around with the idea of buckets. So we're going to possibly be doing yeah. buckets, and they'll probably be black too. Yes. Because otherwise, will. if we didn't do the black, we have a gray bench out of the B2600 that we'd be throwing in here. But no matter what, you would still see this, black, this back wall, and uh, we need to paint this a different color because... Can't have brown, no. everything in this cab is changing. So stay tuned for that. We'll probably be doing that in the next video and then continuing on with the rest of the interior. So hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We got plenty more stuff coming like I just mentioned. Full interior's gotta go in this truck and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.